intersection that's controlled by a stop sign? It would be used more to increase flow? <coughs> uh, more than likely. Mm -hmm. But it, it's also, um, it also, it's also decrease, I would say decrease the way. I mean, you know, if you have a stop sign and you're considering going to another intersect like a roundabout control, it's probably because you have excessive queuing mm -hmm. and people are delayed going to the intersection. Mm -hmm. And so I would say then, yes, you would be looking at a roundabout to increase flow, which you're really, the, 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 the real measure is you're trying to decrease the way. The right. flow is going to go through, it's just queued up, it's parked, it's just going to take a while for it to get to the intersection. Which is the emission issue, which would be the right. reduction. Now, Caltrans in Atherton is only El Camino, right? I'm not familiar with what Caltrans is. I mean, I, I point that out only as the fact that that's where the state's going, and they're kind of weak. It's only one route. It's not Middlefield or the Alameda no, or right. Atherton, right. Woodside. Right. It's just one, and it's controlled in Atherton, two or three signals. Okay. And it's six lanes, six lanes, I think. Ooh. So it's pretty well moving along. Yeah. I've got another question. Um, with respect to um, safety, stop sign, uh, they are safer than stop, stop sign controlled intersections as well, right? For the volume of traffic, yes. I, I just make one comment. Uh, a few years ago, we were in Sedona, uh, and they are basically taking out all their signalized intersections and putting in roundabouts. And in new construction, they're putting in roundabouts instead of traffic lights. And they're all side, you know, in some cases, they're on main thoroughfares and they're putting in large ones. But most of them are small ones on, right. on two lane roads. Uh, and the residents love them. And the Department of Transportation loves them too because if you look at the 10 year cost of ownership, it's significantly less. Uh, so uh, I think. Lots, lots of areas in the country are going in that. Well, my parents live in Arizona, and, and they go to Sedona, and they were in that 68% negative, now they're in the 75% positive. But it took the experience of a roundabout to do that. Yeah. Why, why are people so negative going into it? Okay. So are there any questions or comments from the public? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank, Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Yeah. Can you uh, send us your presentation to the chair? Yeah, I can make a PDF of that. Perfect. Yeah. And then I've got some uh, uh, literature here that includes some of the handouts that I alluded to in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We uh, <coughs> earlier called on uh, Grant Bowers. Grant uh, here. We wouldn't. Uh, and now we've got uh, Arthur Ram on uh, Fair Oaks
legislation and police action to reduce traffic and speeds. And secondly, to enforce the 25 miles per hour speed limit. And the results on both of those was basically, we can't do it. So 1996 to 2007, there were various things that happened. One of the things that quite quite interesting, Police Chief Cater, who many of you might remember, was getting hassled about not enforcing traffic. So he decided to measure the number of tickets that each officer uh, issued. And the result was about a seven or eight fold increase in the number of tickets in one month. Mostly because they were motivated. Then there were a lot of complaints by residents and others, and eventually it was discontinued. Uh, we also have had, in that period, heavy truck through traffic restrictions, and the result with that is, uh, from what I can see, is very little re enforcement. In 2007-2008, there was another major effort by residents to install speed humps. I'm going to make a differentiation between speed humps and speed humps, speed bumps. Speed humps are gradual. There's no jolt. They can be designed for a specific speed, and if you go over that speed, if you go over that critical speed, you get a jolt. If you're at or below that speed, it's just a little roll rolling motion over the uh, hump. Uh, there was a Fair Oaks traffic lane, Fair Oaks lane traffic study that was approved by the council, and then we kind of hit a recession and budget constraints, so that was never done. In 2012, on June 29th, the council directed staff to evaluate the preparation of town traffic common policy and nothing was done. So the conclusion that we residents can come to is the town gives our traffic concerns low priority. Next. Some unique features of Fair Oaks Lane. It's Atherton's only curved collector street. All the other collector streets are straight. It's the second highest collector street in terms of traffic and it's after the straight and wide Atherton Avenue. There are many blind driveways and blind feeder streets. And it's part of the fastest route along with Atherton Avenue between 101 and 280, almost for 10 or 20 miles north and south of us. Most of the vehicles on Fair Oaks Lane are through traffic by non-residents, and there's high truck traffic, including construction vehicles and gardeners, mostly going to and from non-Fair Oaks Lane neighborhood places. Next. What the neighborhood traffic looks like. The sources, Fair Oaks Lane, there are 20 homes and 20 driveway entry points. <coughs> On the three cul-de-sacs at Fair Oaks Lane and one private lane, there are 18 homes and four entry points. The three feeder streets, Virginia, McCormick, and Mount Vernon, 31 homes and three entry points. All of the above is captive traffic to Fair Oaks Lane. There's no other way to get from your home to where you want to go without using Fair Oaks Lane. The bottom two, Royden Drive and Station Lane, uh, has a lot of homes and one entry point each to Fair Oaks Lane. Uh, but they can also access El Camino. So in total, we got 236 homes uh, trying to get on Fair Oaks Lane through 29 uh, entry points. Next. Here was a speed survey conducted in 2007, a uh, number of vehicles per, per, per 24-hour day. It was done October 24, 2007. The eastbound traffic you can see it's almost the same. This was interesting. Each of these 15 mile per hour brackets, 
both eastbound, westbound, and consequently in total, had about the same number of vehicles per day. And the total vehicles per day in the lower right is a little over 5,000. And also another thing that's interesting, and in some cases difficult for me to believe, is that it's about 25% in each of those brackets. And if you look at the two 30 to 45 and the over 45 miles per hour, over 50% of the traffic is going over 30 miles an hour at that time, according to that speed survey, which I think the police department had something to do with. And the speed limit is 25. And the speed limit is 25. So we think we've got a problem. Next. Now here's a more recent uh, peak hour set of vehicle counts that was done in conjunction with the Civic Center Master Plan. And you can see there that uh, we've got a total of 709 per hour in the morning peak and 546 per hour in the evening peak, about 627 average. Now those numbers were measured at El Camino and Ferro Plain. So they only include Ferro Plain traffic that entered at El Camino. It doesn't include Ferro traffic that entered at uh, Lloyd Drive or Station Lane or any of this, the residences along Ferro Plain. So the time between vehicles is probably maybe 20% higher because of that additional traffic. Uh, or the time between vehicles would be 20% lower. 12 seconds at the morning peak and nine seconds in the evening peak, which is a pretty short reaction time for somebody coming out of a driveway and a side street to look right and left and then decide what he's gonna do. Next. Now, in March 2008, as a result of uh, neighborhood interest and activity, there was a traffic common, common survey done. And it included Fair Oaks Lane divided into east of the tracks and west of the tracks. Virginia Lane, McCormick Lane, Mount Vernon. It did not include Logan Park or Bay Station Lane feeders. But uh, looking at the totals down the, uh, on the left side, the uh, item that was the most popular was uh, speed bumps with 19 people said they would like speed bumps. Next was a three-way stop at Virginia Lane. And next after that was 12 with uh, more police enforcement. So uh, it shows that at that time there was a significant, not significantly, but there was a greater interest in speed humps than in a stop sign on Virginia, Virginia Lane or other measures. Next. I'm sorry, before you go, just explain, what, what is not in favor of me? What is what? Not in favor? I don't know. Oh, okay. I think it meant not in favor of doing anything. Those people, I think, thought everything was okay and don't bother with anything more. Now, there's often uh, a concern that uh, speed humps are going to reduce emergency response time. In the case of Fair Oaks Lane, that seems uh, not significant. Fair Oaks Lane is about seven tenths of a mile long. So if you had speed humps, the time to travel that seven tenths of a mile at 25 miles per hour, assuming that's the speed that the speed humps were designed to allow, is 1.68 minutes. Without speed humps, if an emergency vehicle was going 40 miles an hour, it would take 1.05 minutes. So the delay would be about 38 seconds. Now, Fair Oaks Lane is declared by the fire department to be the major route uh, to uh, El Camino from the, uh, 
from the station that's on Fairfax Avenue and the extension at Palmer Lane. Now, that extension, I think it's 15th Avenue, has two chicanes which force all the vehicles to slow and zigzag around the chicane for much less than 25 miles per hour. All the station, all the fire vehicles coming from that station to Middlefield Road and, and beyond, mostly north and south on Middlefield, have to go through those chicanes. And they're going less than 25 miles per hour there. The Atherton police <coughs> response times is uh, under two minutes. And 38 seconds might be significant, but do you want police vehicles going 40 miles an hour on Fair Oaks Lane for somebody that's called in with a problem? That would appear to be uh, a little excessive and dangerous. So the conclusion on emergency vehicles is that speed humps should have little effect on Fair Oaks Lane response time. Current resident concerns. The major concern, I think, is traffic speed and volume. Some of the alternatives to address that include stop signs, speed humps, and speed limit enforcement. The pros of stop signs are their low cost. The cons, everybody has to stop, including those that are conscientious and obey the speed limit. And speed humps are self-enforcing of the speed limit. They cost a little more. Speed limit enforcement, uh, I can't think of any pros other than it might be effective for a time while it's going on. The cons are its cost and it creates a lot of ill will and it's my understanding that it's not a pleasant task for police officers to write tickets. So the preference seems to be to control speed and volume of speed humps. For heavy trucks, one alternative would be to exclude those that have an origin or destination in West Atherton. And I feel that most of the trucks come from there. In fact, I was so concerned about that over the last couple of weeks that yesterday I got a video camera and a still camera, and I was going to go out, and, out on the corner and film things. No heavy trucks. I was out there for about 20 minutes. No heavy trucks. And I couldn't figure out why. And I finally concluded that the season for digging foundations and putting in concrete foundations and so forth is just about over this year. So most of the heavy trucks seem to be associated with that activity, <coughs> and that is my conclusion as to why they went there yesterday. Uh, speed humps would uh, slow down the heavy trucks like they slow down everybody. Uh, it might cause some of them to seek another route. <coughs> with uh, Excluding to or from West Atherton, the pros would be that it would end up with fewer ferro flame big trucks, but the cons would be it's hard to enforce. And speed humps might eliminate some heavy trucks. And the preference would be first to exclude West Atherton traffic, and the second, in my opinion, would be speed humps. Another concern is the edge of the road drop off caused by successive resurfacings of Fair Oaks Lane since starting before I lived there, which is 48 years ago. So the road gets built up higher and higher, the crown gets more and more pronounced and curved, and the drop-off at the edge of the road increases. And it's really hazardous to try to walk along Fair Oaks Lane because of that drop-off. So some alternatives, 
first of all, don't receive, resurface, but rebuild it. In other words, grind, grind it all down, take out the surface, and start from scratch. Another alternative is to fill the adjoining land. The uh, road edge of the uh, rebuilding would be best for the long term, but it would be very expensive. There'd be a lot of disruptions to traffic. The uh, filling in the adjoining land would be low cost, but it would create drainage problems. So the long-term preference would seem to be to rebuild the, the roadway with an edge like Lath Atherton Avenue has. It's kind of those V-shaped prefabricated cement guideways. And the problem would be funding, probably, but that seems to be the best long-term approach. <coughs> Next. So the next steps suggested are prepare the traffic calming speed bump policy paper that was requested by the council over a year ago and never done. It shouldn't be a big deal. Other communities probably have it. All we have to do is find some other communities' policies and copy them and modify here and there. We don't have to reinvent the wheel for that. The next thing is to reactivate the 2008 consultant traffic study and focus on speed humps. The third is evaluate excluding heavy trucks going from West Atherton. And then finally, develop a long-term plan for rebuilding the Ferro-Clinton roadway, but don't add more resurfacing layers and just make the crowd of wheat uh, more. I think that's the end. So, any questions? Yes, thank you very much. Any questions? Jack, uh, I know what you're speaking about. We discussed it years ago in this committee. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, speed humps, they talked about being too expensive and too uh, work and, you know, involved. And these we brought up, my wife and I brought these up two years ago to the, to the previous people in the, uh, the department there. And these are, the, the, this is uh, the traffic logic. They do the speed humps. The, the town of Atherton, to buy these units, would be less than the Easter egg we buy from the Easter egg hunt. <clears throat> it's not millions of dollars, it's four or five thousand dollars. And they can be put in by our workers. And they can be t tested in your, on your street for months and, and move, removed if they had to. There's no damage to the street. And uh, <clears throat> they have the um, emergency vehicles, the fire engines, are, they locate them so the emergency vehicles pass through them. And uh, the, in fact, they have one nearby on uh, Vera Street, if you're familiar with that, in Redwood City, by the school there. And that's the first place we dis I discovered it, I saw them. In Vera, they're across the bay too. And the bottom line is, the permanently installed ones, you're digging the concrete, you're doing all this, you're digging the asphalt. These are just basically, by the workmen of the, of the town, are screwed into the street, and they're permanent if you want, or they can remove other streets. <clears throat> and they're very, very reasonable. And like you say, the uh, speed hump reduction to uh, 20 miles an hour, the price is $4,013. The speed humps reduce, they have units that reduce it to 20 miles an hour, to 25 miles an hour, speed cushions, cushions and so on. But our the people before board and that group were here took note of this, but they just <clears throat> fell through the, the cracks like a lot of things do at Atherton. Um, if I could just say, were we to do it, I completely agree that that is probably the best way to do it. Because yeah. if, if there's some problem, we can take it out. Right. So, um, but I do have a question that um, I don't have very short, I have a very short history here, so I don't really understand the exact problem that I, I inferred what the problem might be, but I'd like to be sure and ask the question. So you, um, you, you're complaining about there being excessive speed, and, um, and, I, and so the problem that that creates, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 
is that when trying to exit on um, the streets or the driveways, one feels unsafe. Right. Um, and um, and so, the, and with higher speed, you have to, you know, you need more of a gap, and so you just people have to, uh, are delayed in exiting the driveways or streets, and uh, and also feel less safe in doing so. Is that is that correct? Yes, that's right. In fact, we have a, a horseshoe driveway with two uh, two points of entry, one close to Middlefield. And there's a very tight corner coming around Middlefield, so that people making a right turn off of Middlefield are up to 25 miles an hour before they reach our driveway, and we can't see them until they almost reach the driveway. So we don't use that exit at all. Mm -hmm. We use the other one, and we have a little more visibility there. Yeah. And by the way, you, you mentioned um, some blind driveways. Um, it, it, um, in general, the, I presume the responsibility of, of unblinding a driveway belongs to the resident. So, um, and that, whether they use a mirror or reduce shrubbery or whatever. Uh, in some cases, of course, there's no solution like what you described other than, but it's fortunate you have an alternative. Um, but, uh, so, and so. I think in most cases, because of the curve in the street, shrubbery isn't the answer. Mm -hmm. And mirrors don't help you see around the curve. Although they, they, they can if you got the right kind of mirror <coughs> across the street, but that's, they, that's trickier and you need you need so permission. You want to put and it on the neighbor's property. <laughs> With permission, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it could work. Yeah. Mary, have yeah. okay. Another point I might make is uh, <coughs> if we went back to the slide that showed the difference between east and west uh, Fair Oaks Lane. The western part between El Camino and the tracks is straight. And the people on that street seem less enthusiastic about speed humps than the people on the curved part. So for speed humps on Fair Oaks Lane, it probably isn't necessary to consider the part between the tracks and El Camino unless those residents would want it, and from the previous survey, it sounded like they weren't wild about it. But where they would really be helpful is between the tracks and Middlefield. That's where most of the curve is. That's where most of the driveways are. Uh, I think one comment that uh, I sometimes have tried to walk along uh, Fair Oaks uh, you know, to get to Middlefield, and it, it's just plain not safe to do it. Uh, there's no real room to walk and the traffic's going so fast that it's just plain scary. So I usually cut through what is McCormick and go over <coughs> to uh, get over to uh, Ringwood uh, where there's a sidewalk. So, um, you know, I, I agree with you. I think there's just no excuse for having cars driving at 45 or faster on that road. But I'd also add that's not the only road where we have the I'm problems. Sure. Uh, we, have sure Selby, other, we have it on Selby, we have it on Athens. Other streets in Athens that could benefit from speed homes as well. Yeah. Even so, the straight streets. So I, I think it would behoove us to try to take a, a look at this again and really do something about it. Maybe do uh, some, some experiments to see what works. On, on one or two streets, and, and once we find uh, reasonable mitigation measures, then we we do it on other streets as well. It, it'll take time, of course, uh, if we put our minds to it, but you still have to do the outreach to the residents and the traffic studies. For what it's worth, um, I live on a street which, uh, which uh, at the end of which is a blind intersection, um, the, uh, the uh, right by the S-curve on Atherton Avenue. And so cars come whipping around the corner um, at, at excessive speed. So the way I deal with that is by rolling down both windows in the car and listening. Um, and the reason why I say both windows is with, with, um, with, if with both, you can tell is the sound coming from the right or the left. Um, if you only have the driver's side, you can't tell which direction it's coming from. And um, in using that approach, it's, it's worked for me and my family, but when it's raining, or if the air conditioning is blowing hard, or if there's a train going by, and there are a number of cases it doesn't work, but it often does. Are there any comments from the public? <clears throat> what 
to use the mic or? Please. Sure. I'm Greg Cotton. I live on 43 Virginia uh, for over 30 years. And the risk is getting killed turning left coming off Virginia. Uh, but the grace of God, at least two instances I've had over the years, that it was only because the guy could stop. Because the street curves and you just cannot have enough time to react uh, no matter how long you sit there and wait and watch. If you get your nose out there and the guy comes around in a spot because you can't see him coming and he's going 45 to 50 miles an hour, which the traffic study proves that they do, it's really a, a sad situation. We had one fatality at, uh, at 174, which is on a corner that nobody remembers, or, but I've been around so long that I do remember it. It was, it was a big tree in front of the house, so it wasn't, uh, and it was in the middle of the night, so I, it wasn't uh, turning left off of Virginia, but it was just the fact that there was a tree in the street, and the guy was probably going so fast, and he may have been DUI, I don't know, but uh, it, you know, he just ran right into the tree and killed him. So, uh, but I think the, the whole street, it just needs to, if we, if we took the money from Prop, whatever it is, 20A, and buried the electric poles, that would improve the visibility. Because they, the electric poles block the vision both directions. <coughs> and, uh, and the trees and the fences, I don't know whether they're at the, at the proper limit or not. But I think that, that, uh, that the speed bumps would certainly slow things down. And I think it would really help the situation. And the other thing, the drop off, I had a, a real bad fall at night. I was, shouldn't have been out there walking, but I was. And it was about a six inch drop off on uh, Fair Oaks at, at Middlefield. And I just, I didn't see it and I just walked off of it. And I just completely uh, fell. It was the hardest fall I've ever had. And I fortunately got up and walked away. But I mean, it was, it was because of the drop off between the pavement and, and, you know, over the years building up. Uh, so I think those are just testimonies of the, of the risk and the safety issues at, in Fair Oaks. And I guess the only thing else you could do was uh, <coughs> make it a cul-de-sac and let everything go down Watkins. <laughs> uh, any other comments? So I'm uh, Kyle Enright. I live at 174 Fair Oaks. And I guess like Gary, I'm relatively new to others and moved here three years ago. So I've got four young kids ranging in age from five to 13. And I gotta say, Larry, I was extremely distressed by your comment that these kinds of things take time, especially in light of John's comment. I hope it doesn't take one of my kids getting killed on Fair Oaks Lane before this commission or the city of Atherton decides to do something about this. Because it is a real hazard. I mean, I'm out there a couple times a week with my kids, whether we're walking, whether we're biking, Every time I cross the street, I'm taking my kid's life in my hands. There are no crosswalks. There are no stop signs. Traffic is easily going 35, 40 plus miles an hour. And I think it's, been, it's gotten a lot worse, obviously, since Facebook's moved into town. And I love Facebook. They've done a lot of great things for the extended community. But it's certainly increased the traffic flow. And because people are slowed down coming on and off of the 101, they're in more of a hurry to get to and from the 101. This is one of the major thoroughfares to get from one side of the other to the other. So, you know, I, I really hope, you know, that we at least start soon with something simple. Let's put some speed humps in. I think it would make a material difference um, in a lot of ways, right? And there's nothing, eight seconds time span, you saw a car going 40 miles an hour. There's no way I can get across the street with my kids. You can put all the mirrors you want, you can do all the things you want, but you gotta slow the traffic down. You just got to. Um, and, you know, and if you look at our neighborhood, we don't have a lot of homes, <coughs> as Jack pointed out, but the last three that have sold, we've got four kids between five and 13. The Gruners across the street, Gruner Adelstons across the street have a 12-year-old and an eight-year-old. The folks who just bought on Fair Oaks have two twin 18-month-olds. Everybody knows it's not 70-year-olds who are buying in Atherton, right? It's folks in their 30s and 40s who have young kids, and I'd really love to see the city do the responsible thing and see this commission do the responsible thing and just take some quick action now, study all you want once we get some speed homes in, and I think a year from now I'd love to be coming back and you know, praising
how much safer the street is. Thank you. Can we go? I, I have a question for Jack. I'm not Rick DeColio, and I live on Clay Drive. Jack, in that study, the 2007 study, it looked like um, there was an overwhelming response to the set study, which was a little surprising. But of the respondents, if I recall it right, from looking at when you put it up, 19 favored a stop sign in Virginia. And that's a pretty good number, and, and slightly less favored the speed humps. Do you know why? 19 favored speed humps. 14 favored a three-way stop at Virginia. Okay, so, so my memory yeah. flipped on me. But uh, why, 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 what, what was the response to the stop sign? Yes. Was, was that was that it was either a yes up? or a no. No, but was that ever evaluated as something that the town might do? Because it strikes me that that would be one mechanism to slow the traffic. For well, sure. it, it would definitely slow the traffic, but it would slow all the people who obey the speed limit as well. In both directions, uh, speed humps are self policing. You set the speed limit, you design the speed limit, or you design the speed hump for that speed limit, and it enforces the limit pretty well. I think a lot of people who maybe oppose speed humps think of them as what speed bumps used to be known as. And speed bumps give you a jolt. But now the latest technology is that you can design either speed humps or speed tables, and a speed table is a wider speed hump where you have a gradual up and then you go flat and then you gradual down. So I think you know, speed humps to me are uh, probably a very good answer. So, um, Gordon, um, uh, as the resident <coughs> expert, do you, can you uh, enlighten us about the pros and cons of speed humps? Um, let me first talk about stop signs. The studies that I've seen suggest that traffic resumes its previous rate of speed, whatever it was, within about 150 feet of the stop sign. <laughs> Actually, um,